Today we'll be making some cool 3D animated app promo or whatever you want to call it to present your apps in a more novel fashion. Stay tuned. <laughs> Everybody, hope you all are doing great today. I'm your host Rupin from Jammed. I know it's been a while since I've been consistent with making videos and all, but I really needed this break from content creation and finally I'm back with something a little interesting, or I hope at least. So I really wanted to share it with you guys since I've noticed that many of you love Blender, so this one goes out for you. If you're new to this channel, here we do design content dedicated for designs like yourself on various different topics, jammed in a short amount of time to not bore the crap out of you. The videos on this channel are usually vague and short, we aim to encourage designers to use their intuition to solve design problems or to learn new techniques. If that sounds like something you'd appreciate, welcome abroad and I hope you enjoy your stay here. Before we begin, a lot of what I'm going to explain in this video is explained in much more detail by Derek Elliott, a brilliant Blender man on YouTube, very thankful for his content. I will leave links to his channel, if you're interested, please go support him. Alright, get your blender ready and tag along. Of course, we're not going to model an iPhone from scratch, don't worry, we've got this very cool free iPhone model made by the Potato King 55. Damn, wish I was that guy. Go ahead and download it from BlendSwap, link is in the description and don't forget to leave a nice comment on this guy's model. Make sure blender is open in front of you and you want to make sure that you absolutely get rid of this cube. Then head up and click file, append and search for the blend file that you just downloaded Go inside the objects file and look for a file named Taurus. Alright, it's the iPhone we're going to be using. Very decent model. I'd also like to point out that it's also very huge. We can press Z and go in either render or material preview to see the materials applied on the model. We want to change the display on the screen. I already had designed an app prototype in the past on After Effects, so I'll be using that as an example. Make sure the picture or video that you're going to import has the same resolution as that of an iPhone. Now select the iPhone and head over to the materials tab on the right hand side and then if you look here in the materials you should be able to find a shiny one, which is the material of the screen. Click on that then head over to the shading tab on the top here. And don't get scared, we aren't really performing demonic rituals at least for today, uh, just replacing an image really. Drag the video or image that you want to use and then replace it in the notes section here. Now we're going to simply replace the connections of the image with the video that we just put on. And we're live. You will notice that the video isn't playing when you play the animation, that's because you need to tick the auto refresh option over here. The options above it control how long you want the animations to play, which frame to start on, offset, etc. I'm not really gonna talk a lot about that, should be quite easy to figure out. Hey, the model is ready, let's make a motherfucking scene! Yeah! Definitely not that type of scene. The skip might be onto something though. Anyway, position your camera wherever you want it to be by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Numpad 0, rotate your iPhone a little bit to where it looks fine, then Shift plus A and add in a new plane, scale that boy up so that it covers the entire scene from the sides, move it back slightly, up or down, however you want it, and we want it to smoothly arc upwards, so press Tab, go into Edit Mode, press E, then extrude the edge at the back and make sure it's only moving on the Z axis by pressing Z. And again, you want to make sure it's high enough to cover the entire camera. Now select the same corner again and we're going to smoothen it out so that we don't have a very rough cut. Press Ctrl plus B and then move your mouse a little, you'll notice that we're adding some bevel. Make sure to increase the number of cuts by scrolling on your mouse and once you're comfortable, click again and we've got ourselves a cool flat color background. To make the light reflect even smoother on the object, you can right click and shade smooth. Perfect, we just need to set up the lighting. I'll take the default blender lamp because we do not discriminate against it, we only discriminate against the default cube. Anyway, move it behind our phone here. Also let's change the color of the background like I did in the original video to black. Again, go to material, add a new material, change the color in it, I'm not gonna go over that again. I'm gonna duplicate the light source by pressing shift D, move it back here to give a little fill light and we've created ourselves a small little scene. Now to make the EV render look slightly better, you can go into render settings and make sure to activate these settings. First you can slightly increase the sample size, then check ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections and motion blur. All of these settings will add to the realism of the scene. Just make sure to increase the threshold on the bloom slightly so that it doesn't overwhelm the scene. The main scene is now ready, we'll be doing some extremely basic animation now. Drag in a new window from the bottom here to import our music. Picking the right song is important to decide how the animation is going to play out. 
choose the tab called Video Sequencer and drag and drop your music of choice. Skip to the part you want to use in the video and then by pressing K you can split the song and drag it at the start of the timeline to begin synchronizing the song with the motion. Great, now we're just gonna set our frames to match the length of the song and we're good to go. I'm not an expert on Blender animation techniques so bear with me. When you're animating it's always important to have that in mind. So I want the phone to be placed as you see here near the end of the transition and I was thinking maybe make it swiftly come from the left side of the screen as the song goes vroom. Uh, I hope that made some sense. To start animating the phone we come to the scene that we wanted to stop at and press I while having the phone selected and select location, rotation, scale. Now we have all of these three properties keyframed into the future. Make sure to do the same with the backlight and the camera as well because they're going to be animated too. To make the phone come sliding inside we need to go to the very first frame, move the phone outside of the camera frame and once again press I, insert another keyframe with the same technique that we used earlier. And as you can see when we press play the animation plays out nicely. But unfortunately it's kinda out of sync. So in order to make the speed at which the phone comes in frame match with the song, I'm going to play with the easing a little bit, right click on the very first frame and select easing mode and pick ease out or ease in to make it come in faster. Then play with the keyframe interpolation settings to control the speed. To get this part right, it comes with a lot of trial and error, so trust your gut. Now do the same thing for the camera and the lighting, it's important to keep in mind how each scene will continue in the upcoming or next scene, so having a storyboard is highly beneficial as it will very much help you decide all the transitions, cuts and such. So keep trying to animate the little scene that you have there till you reach something that looks nice to you and repeat the process on the other cuts as well. Oh and you can also animate the change of colors too, you can pretty much animate anything in Blender. I highly suggest you go watch some Blender Animation Basics video, it will probably cover shit much better than I'm doing right now. Now you're ready to export the animation, keep in mind that the motion blur doesn't work in the viewport, so if you have it checked you should be able to see the motion blur in the render, which will add a lot to the realism of the whole animation. Click on the output settings down here and you can change the resolution of your output to 4K by doubling the 1920x1080, of course you can adjust the frames, this is very important to adjust before you begin the animation. The two options that I use the most are PNG and FFmpeg, which were the most reliable for me. You can select where you want to export your animation by clicking this little browse button over here. Now there's also one more thing we can play with into the render settings and it's the color management. Here you can adjust the color style, contrast, you can figure it out yourself, I'm pretty sure you have a decent pair of eyes. I think it's better to export in PNG sequence just in case your computer decided to peace out on you. You can still render it again where it stopped. But for the sake of this tutorial, I remember I used FFmpeg video settings because the animation is extremely short and the chance of my computer crashing on me is close to zero so I don't really think that I'm that unlucky anyway. Now I'll go over the original files that I used to animate this video using the same techniques that I've described earlier. Now this is animation number one. Animation number two. And finally, animation number three. I don't know if this was helpful at all, but I just wanted to put it out there for reference. Anyway, after rendering all of these scenes, you're ready for some After Effects basic motion tracking. We have the video imported in After Effects after rendering, now it's just a matter of combining the videos together with the audio to form the entire thing. But I'll just touch on one effect that I've used a couple of times and it's the motion track text. To start motion tracking, you need to start at a point in which the scene is somewhat clear and there isn't much motion blur so that you can track objects much easier. I will start motion tracking around this part. Now get the tracker panel out which you can find in the window menu in case you can't find it and click on track motion which will give you this point that you can use to track parts of the video. So I'm going to place it over the face of the lady over here because it stays clear throughout the entire video and has a lot of contrast. Make sure to check rotate and scale settings as well, which will give you an additional point to track. Drag it onto something else that is a little far from our subject to have a nice track. You can adjust the inner box according to the subject you want to track and the outer box to the searching area. There's going to be a lot of moving to the right side, so I'll increase the width of it so it can detect it easier. Click on this little button down here, which will move this thing one frame at a time or just click the one next to it to analyze the entire scene. Yup, that's one way of tracking things in After Effects, pretty easy stuff. Check if the track is pretty accurate and if you're satisfied with it, you can go ahead and right click in the layers down here then create a new null object to which we will add the motion tracking properties. Now in the tracker window again, click on edit target, 
which will open to you all the nulls that you have and choose the one that we just created then go ahead and click apply and you should have it ready. You can then write down whatever text you want to write and simply parent the text to the null object. That's pretty much all you have to do. You can of course play with the transparency, rotation, etc. Uh, by clicking on this little time icon here which gives you keyframes that you can turn it to zero, have it fade in. But these are some boring stuff, Adobe After Effects, basics are old news by now I think. If you want to catch up easily I suggest you watch one YouTube video that covers After Effects basics and you should easily understand what I'm talking about. That's what I've done in my main file, just a bunch of motion tracking, syncing, and yeah. Anyway, it's time to wrap up this video, thank you for sticking around for this long, I really appreciate it. A couple of updates regarding this channel, I've been booming lately in subs, almost at 400 subs right now, which is very very encouraging, thank you a lot guys. And for those of you who share my videos with others, that's some boss shit I swear. I will try to keep uploading regularly on this channel, however at the moment I can't really promise very consistent uploads, but that is very likely to happen in the near future. I got some personal matter that is keeping me kind of busy lately, plus I picked up some new hobbies here and there, so that's taking most of my time. So I'll try my best to keep up the work. Anyway, if you're enjoying jammed content, make sure to leave a like on this video, share it with other cool designers who would also find it useful, and don't forget to subscribe for future jammed content, and let me know down in the comments what topic would you like me to talk about, or what specific design problem are you facing. Let's have a little talk down there. As always, it's a pleasure to have you here, and I'll catch you later. Peace.